Convocation season is underway across this country. We're looking here at images of one of 27 ceremonies at Canada's largest university, the University of Toronto, all this month. Some 14,000 students at that uh, fine institution are going to don a gown, walk the aisle, accept their degrees. And we want to take a moment to celebrate one of them. I Iman Hamad tonight will receive her PhD in engineering from U of T. Now the road that leads to Convocation Hall for Iman has been filled with more obstacles than most people could ever come. So let us talk about her story because Iman is with me in studio. So great to have you Hi. on this morning of all mornings, the day you will receive your PhD. How are you feeling? Um, ecstatic. <laughs> <laughs> I can see the yeah. smile. You're not going to wipe that from your face no. all day. <laughs> yeah. Ecstatic. And for very good reason. I want to begin or have early in our conversation a picture that shows you where Iman's story began, which is in a refugee camp, a Palestinian refugee camp in Jordan. Here's the picture that you gave us, Iman. Tell me who, who we're seeing in this picture when this was. Uh, so this was a few months after my dad, my mom passed away. Um, so you can see my brother is taking the picture, and this is the rest of my siblings. On my lap is my youngest sister. So this is you in the red. Yes. And you're 15 at this point. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 15 at that point, and you have a total of seven siblings. Uh, no, seven in the we family. Two, four, six. Yes. Yeah, so brother uh, taking seven yes. all told. So there you are. But this is a, a Palestinian refugee camp where you were born and raised. Yes. So that's where it started. Yes. Prior to this picture, though, when you were a little girl, even littler than that, yes. what was the academic dream for you? Professor. To be a professor. From the very start? Yes. And you were good at school? Yeah, I was top on my class. I was top of, on my school. Yeah, I was always good. Yeah. And then your mom died when you were young. Yes. Just 15. Mm -hmm. And what did that do to the schooling in the end? The uh, plan? So it moved from being ideal, in my view, like it's... Uh, from my from being ideal to being um, limited so you have so many limitations I had limited energy because I had to do so much more work at home because this would be clear you yes. began to take care of the yes. other six siblings yes. in your family I had to as do the oldest cooking, ha all house chores everything because my dad was working so I had little time little energy and I had to do uh, the best I wanted to continue to do best in school, but I couldn't. So I had to go from 99% to 97, then 96 in high school. It was, for me, that was hard on myself because I'm a perfectionist, but I started to learn that good enough is good because 96 is better than giving up and staying at home, for example, right? But you were still, even while looking for after all of your siblings, you were still getting in the top 90s yes, at school? <laughs> sure. So what were you doing, like furtively studying on the side or grabbing a few minutes here and there? You learn to uh, like jam all your focus, make the use of the little time that you have. Like classroom is study your time. It's not classroom, sit there and be like, no, this is my study time. Like I have to get it all in this hour because when I go back home I don't have that time cannot believe it yes. in a camp looking after your family studying <laughs> yeah. for whatever you can but obviously I mean I see the love of learning yes. burning still yes is that right yeah, burn yeah, for you yeah, always yeah, 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 yeah. exactly I, I can't stop so this is why I want to be uh, in a position in a career where you continue to learn you continue to challenge yourself Huh. Um, this is life. Like, if you don't do that, you don't, you're not living. Just despite it all, again, at this day, you still didn't lose the thought of being a professor. No. Still uh, was the dream? Um, you could see I was tired. You could see mm -hmm. that I'm not as optimistic as I am now. You could see that I couldn't see my dream happening. There was a stage. This is just a few months after that. So this is where I would hide and cry myself out because I couldn't see what's next. Uh, but then I catch on to my way of life where I say to myself, okay, let's just keep going to the next day, the next day, and the next day, small steps at a time. Keep, keep busy doing something. And I looked at taking care of my sisters and brothers as my duty and uh, being forward. I did not look at it as a responsibility. So um, I'm glad that it happened this way. Now, I, as I reflect back, it was, it was perfect because I, I was a mom, 
back then. I was a mom at 15. I'm a mom now. Well, listen, hold that thought yes. because what happened next steps and next day and next day was eventually you came to Canada yes. shortly thereafter and built your own family. Talk yes. about learning how to manage time as well because here's the next picture of Iman and her four children yes. and husband and there you are there. So you're still studying with children over your yes. own. You learned this so young and, uh, and, and here you are after all of that road, uh, as I said, tonight at Convocation Hall receiving your PhD in engineering. Um, you said ecstatic, but imagine for me what it's going to feel like as someone who always dreamed of be being a professor to receive that designation. Um, grateful, extremely grateful, because uh, it wouldn't have happened without the mentors, the people, my family, my, my smallest family, my current family, my husband, extremely grateful. I can't be, like, I don't think it's happiness as much as grateful for all the opportunities. Like coming to Canada and going to the US was beyond my dreams back then. But things happened for a reason. And I'm grateful and thankful uh, beyond any measure. Like this, I've never dreamed of this. And it came to be true. So what do you think yeah. the lesson is of your uh, story, Iman? Um, uh, it's, Life is not easy, but if you set mind, your mind to do something, don't be hard on yourself because life is already hard. Take small steps, uh, um, be optimistic, be positive. Um, uh, look for resources, ask for help, don't be ashamed. Um, uh, pay it forward, find a space where you can get energy for your every, every day to day interactions. So for me, that was volunteer work. For somebody else, it might be another hobby but find a source of energy to help you along the way. And like, you've been doing yeah. that, as you say, volunteering as you've looked after your family and done your studies, all leading up to tonight. What are you gonna do with this when you are Dr. Iman Hamad? <laughs> what are you gonna do? Um, uh, I will always be me. So right mm -hmm. now I'm working with PwC as a consultant in cybersecurity. Uh, the dream of being a professor is still with me, uh, but that dream means being able to help people, being able to make a contribution and the impact, whatever the title is. Sure, I would love to be a faculty, mentor students and stuff, but it's not, I learned not to take by titles, but more about what you do every day. So that will always be me. You'll find me in volunteer work, you'll find me with my family, you'll find me at work. Always and, busy. <laughs> and having attained yes. that which you set out under the most incredible of circumstances so many years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks for the story today. No, what a wonderful you. learning from you. And you enjoy every single moment, you and your family, all there to see yeah. as you become a professor at U of T tonight. Thanks for coming Thank in. you so much. Thank you, Heather.